Hi everyone, my name is Pat, and I recently started this channel just to upload let's plays of games I've never played before. But now that I think about it, once in a blue moon, maybe I can upload something like this. Welcome to the ultimate YouTube video recording beginner guide 2018. <sighs> Such a huge title, huh? This video is broken up to three parts, using OBS for recording videos, importing and rendering videos using Sony Vegas with the best settings for YouTube, and the same with Adobe Premiere Pro CC and not CS6 because it has difficulties working with multiple audio tracks. Please use the following timestamps I've included on the video description to help guide you. If at any point in time you are confused or have a question, please leave comments below. Ah, the beautiful open broadcaster software. Free, and although it may seem complicated at first, it is truly simple. Browsing through YouTube and Google, you will find many articles and videos on how to set up this program, but are you setting it up the proper way? Don't get the wrong idea, I'm not berating anyone's setup, I just want to help you make proper informed decisions and not mindlessly copy what you see before you start recording videos. The things you will need to install are OBS Studio, and if you want to record VoIPs such as Discord, Skype, or TeamSpeak, please include Virtual Audio Cable and Voice Meter Banana. Hold off on installing the banana for now. Open up OBS. On a fresh install, this area should be empty. The first thing you want to do is enter settings. Originally, the theme looks like this, and accessing the drop down menu will let you change the way it looks. I prefer dark. Ignore the rest of this page except for this. Make sure this is checked at all times. A tutorial for streaming is not included in this video, so we will ignore this tab. In the Output tab, change Output Mode to Advanced. We will skip this tab as well as it is related to streaming. Under Recording, set up your raw video footage folder. This is mine. I came from the dark ages of DX Story, and I have kept the name of the folder to remind me of my tragic past. And my F drive is a dumping ground for my videos. Then have Recording Format in MP4 or MOV. Why these two? Well, mainly because they are very similar to each other. MP4 is heavily supported by everything, and all our electronics can play and edit MP4 videos. MP4 works excellent on Sony Vegas and many other video editors such as PowerDirector and Final Cut Pro. It has two flaws, one of them is written here, but this has never happened to me and I hope it never happens to you. In summary, if you could not end your recording session before your computer crashes, or you lose power in the house, the whole video goes to waste. Anyways, Adobe Premiere has a recurring problem with audio desynchronization with MP4, so I recommend using MOV. FLV can only record one audio track. Until recently, Shadowplay also recorded in one audio track, but because the demand for multiple tracks was so high, they had to grant their wishes. Why do you want multiple audio tracks? Well, the sole purpose of that is for editing and post-processing. Let's say the game audio was too loud at some point, and it completely masks your commentary. You can't fix that with one audio track. The benefit of using FLV is the ability to revive the video even if your computer crashes. But then, that is also 50-50, but it's a higher chance than MP4. This is the most reliable container for that. FLV is not supported in Sony Vegas and Adobe Premiere, which is a downside. MKV is quickly catching up, and who knows, maybe in the future we'll be seeing more of this video format. However, MKV is not supported by both Sony Vegas and Adobe Premiere. There are extra steps you can take in OBS and convert it to MP4, but that will not be discussed in this video. Encoders by default, it will be X264. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, please use NVIDIA Encoder. If you have an AMD graphics card, please use their H.264 encoder. First, we will set up an NVIDIA loadout, or you can go ahead and skip ahead to X.264 or AMD H.264. The most controversial Google search topic is this area below. Please select CQP for your rate control. 
Why CQP, you ask? Well, OBS will try to record each frame of the video with constant quality, whether it is high or low motion games. The quality is not gated by bitrate. With CQP, you will get the most video quality out of your file size. Using CBR and VBR require a little bit of knowledge in bit rates. Know this, constant bit rate, unless you specified a high bit rate of 40,000 or more, the quality is lost when used with high motion games. Can everyone's computer handle 40,000 bit rate? No. VBR is on the safe side with their file sizes. However, its ability to adapt to the motion on the screen is a plus compared to CBR but it is gated by bitrate unlike CQP. Therefore, the bitrate will fluctuate within the value you inputted, which would be 40,000 or so. And the same question arises, can everyone's computer handle recording at 40,000 bitrate? No. Notice how in lossless, there is no room for input. Well, it's because lossless will give you the highest video quality at the cost of humongous file sizes. 10 seconds of me recording my desktop doing nothing was 142 megabytes. Multiply that by 6 and you get a minute costing you almost a gig of hard drive space. The safe range for CQP is 15 to 25. For a while I have been recording on 18 because it was somewhat in the middle and decided to step down a bit. The lower you go, the higher the quality, the bigger the file size. 14 to 15 is the best way to go, especially for high motion games, but there is absolutely no shame in the higher numbers. Put preset on high performance and profile on high. Leave 2 pass encoding checked and B frames at 2. Compared to NVIDIA encoder, X264 has, in addition to CBR and VBR, CRF and ABR. The recommended rate control for X264 is CRF. Why CRF? Well, ABR or average bitrate is the predecessor of VBR. At a given bitrate, the video quality is less than VBR but higher than CBR. So the chart goes like this. I've mentioned the difference between CBR and VBR previously, so refer to the timeline if you need. The safe range for the CRF value is 15 to 25. The lower the number, the bigger the file size. This is all very similar to CQP when using the NVIDIA encoder. 15 is viable with CPU usage at super fast. If you think your recording isn't going too well and your CPU is struggling, opt to use ultra fast and bump CRF to 20 or 25 or between that. Other than that, leave these three alone. I do not have an AMD graphics card installed, so I can't see the options, but OBS suggests the following. For preset, put it at lossless. Quality preset, balanced or quality. Quality will obviously take more performance out of your computer and keyframe interval will be between two to five. There's no bitrate mentioned here because with this setting, the encoder should be able to adapt and increase the bitrate if necessary to reach a high quality. The next big thing on our list is audio. 
this is something where OBS shines at, especially if you want to edit and go through post-processing. First, set up how many audio tracks you want to record in the recording tab. Just a normal gameplay of Witcher 3? No problem. Game audio is 1, microphone is 2. How about a co-op gameplay of Dying Light? No problem. Game audio is 1, microphone is 2, and your Discord or Skype will be 3. This requires a little bit more setup, which we will discuss later. In the audio tab, this used to be personal preference, where I would have recommended an audio bitrate between 192 kilobits per second to 320 kilobits per second. The higher the value, the better the quality and more noticeable on people who use high-end headphones. Our ears can barely notice the difference between 128 to 192, but with all this fancy equipment, there's no reason to be less than 320. In the audio tab, put sample rate to 48 kilohertz. YouTube guidelines suggest the acceptable sample rates to be 96 kilohertz to 48 kilohertz. Make sure your playback and recording devices are set at 48 kilohertz as well. If you've installed virtual audio cable, make sure the cable input is set at 48 kilohertz. Your game audio or main audio device will be desktop audio device. Your microphone will be mic auxiliary device. If you decide to record your Discord, Skype, or TeamSpeak, you need to install voice meter. If you don't want to record your friends, please skip to the next part. Before installing voice meter, please press OK to save our current settings. I suggest you watch these steps first as the audio will cut off and you will not hear any sound from YouTube. However, I have put in captions if you want to follow along. Set up your virtual mixer by accessing your sound menu. Make voice meter input your default playback device and default communication device. Make voice meter output your default recording device and communication device. Going back to voice meter, click menu and make sure run at startup is checked. Click A1 and select your main audio device. Click on top here and select WDM cable output. Click on top here and select WDM microphone. That will be your microphone. Make sure only A1 is selected for these two columns and B1 is selected for your microphone. If you want to monitor your voice without latency, you can select A1 for your microphone as well. The benefit of putting your microphone through voice meter is that you have the ability to control the volume and add bass, which are lows, or treble, which are highs. Then we set up your main communication so your friends can hear you and you can record their voices. We will use Discord for the example. Go to user settings, which is this cog on the bottom, voice and video. Input device, your microphone, will always be voice meter output. And the output device, your friends, will always be cable input. The same will apply to Skype and TeamSpeak. Return to the OBS settings. Put your VoIP as desktop audio device 2, which will be cable input. Then, your microphone will be voice meter output, and your main audio device now becomes voice meter input. Press OK and click any cog from this mixer. Go to Advanced Audio Properties and match up your tracks here. So, we said game audio will be 1, microphone will be 2, and VoIP will be 3, if you want to include your friends. Then, return to settings, and we will be moving on to video. For this next section, you need to go as high as your PC will take you. If you've got the top of the line equipment, just record in 1920, 1080, 60 frames. There's no reason not to. On the other hand, if your computer cannot handle recording 60 frames, then don't worry, 30 frames is still acceptable. 1920, 1080, 30, or 1280, 720, 30. Remember, what makes a video complete is not just the resolution or the frames of the video, but it is a combined effort between the creator and their equipment, so do not be discouraged. Change this to Langsos for downscale filter and try to synchronize these two resolutions. The canvas is this thing right here, 
the area we will work on, and the output is your raw video footage. Lastly, we can set up the hotkeys. For now, find buttons for your start and stop. For me, it was F7 and F8. Click it once, click the button, and we're done. I do not recommend using hotkeys when you are recording with one monitor and the game will be in full screen. I have done many times where I pressed F7 and I'm done, I press F8 and I look at my folder and nothing was recorded. So please click start recording and then you see that it actually is recording and then start playing. It's because you can just cut that out in post processing but you cannot work with nothing. Now the scenes and sources. If you are confused with how this works, imagine it as title and subtitles on a piece of writing. So let's create a scene and name it Terraria. I already have Terraria running, so we will use this as an example. To record gameplay, you need to set up a game capture source. Set up the mode to capture specific window as some games have problems with capture any full screen application. Start the game, minimize it, and the game will be in the window drop down menu. And we can see that happening with Terraria. Now if you want to include your mouse pointer, keep this box checked. To resize the window, just adjust these red corners. To cut the window, hold alt and drag. To reset any changes you've made, just right click this, transform, reset transformation. To lock any sources from moving, just click the padlocks. The sources appear in their according order. So if the webcam is on top of the game capture, it will appear as an overlay, vice versa. The next section I want to talk about is how to set up any Logitech webcam the correct way using OBS. I've tested this out with the C920, C922, and the C930E. Again, if you don't need this, please refer to the timeline. Create a video capture device source. If the face cam is going to be less than a quarter of your screen, 720p is good enough. FPS set to the highest FPS. Video format MJPEG. And always have buffering disabled. Leaving this enabled, you will have audio desync where it will fail to link lip movements with the microphone recording. And click configure video. A Logitech menu should look similar to this. If not, don't worry, the concept will be similar. If you are in a poorly lit area, have your exposure as low as possible without getting it pitch black. Do not boost it to compensate for low lighting. This works together with gain. Do not maximize the gain or you will get graining. Try to keep it below 50. In order to get the best quality out of your webcam, you need to provide your own lighting. Natural lighting from windows are the best. Turn off low light compensation and set the white balance to auto. And there you have it. You can upload your videos without editing it if you are very professional at that or you can put it through post-processing to do all sorts of things. The only limit you have is your own creativity. Now that you've got multiple audio tracks running, you cannot be using Windows Media Player or your default video player to watch your raw footages. Why you ask? It's because the default player will only play the first audio track you've assigned, which would be the game or your microphone and you cannot mix both. The best ones I recommend for Windows 7 to 10 is MPC HC which is Media Player Classic or the widely known VLC player. With MPC HC, just right click the video, go to audio track and then find a track you want to listen to. With VLC player, go to the same video, right click it, audio track and then select the track you want to listen to. Sony Vegas 12 was my first editing program ever. And then I moved to 14 and I ultimately left for Adobe Premiere as it was superior in every way for me. To get started, you need to import everything. 
your raw video footage, your intro, your music, whatever. Now the drawback with Sony Vegas is that it creates these files which are associated with the media you just imported. This does not happen with Adobe Premiere, so there's that extra step in keeping your folders organized. Take the imported video into the workspace, you should get a pop-up like, do you want to set your project video settings to match this media? Always put yes. This does not in any way affect your render quality, but it affects the preview window right here. If you do not say yes to that pop-up box, you will probably lag a bit when you're seeking through the video. A single audio track looks like this. Now imagine if your game audio and your microphone was mixed together to form those waves. You cannot pick out your microphone and try to edit things out. Our OBS raw footage would look like this, where it has two audio tracks at least. And if you record it with voice meter, it should look like this. The game audio, the microphone, and your VoIP. This is not a Sony Vegas tutorial, so I will not teach you how to edit but let's say you finished everything and you want to render now. Press D twice and you have this rectangle select tool. Select just your videos and right click to access switches. Then go for disable resampling. Resampling is done automatically on Adobe Premiere. So only in Sony Vegas do you have to do it manually. Why do we do this? Well, to sum it up in one sentence, in high motion games, Resampling butchers quality by blending frames together into a mosh pit. Double click the gray area to select everything. Go to file, render as. Now there's a debate between Sony AVC MVC and main concept AVC AAC. I myself used Sony AVC MVC, but I'm not going to join in on that foolery. Instead, I will leave it up to you with the settings I have used in the past. Click any of these settings, it doesn't matter since you will be editing it. Always remember, it is safe to downscale a 1080p video to 720p, but do not do the opposite. Do not upscale your resolution. If you recorded a 720p video, then render it in 720p. Do not turn it into 1080p. Do not lie about your frames either. If you record in 30 frames, do not scale it to 60 frames. Sony Vegas is not a magician. Make sure you name your setting and click the floppy disk when you're done. Put a star beside it and it will appear in your favorites. Find a good place to put the video and name it. Make sure render loop region is selected, meaning you will only render the things you've highlighted previously. There has been many problems with people having long black screens at the end of their video. So this is one way to solve it. And that's it. We're done. I am just getting used to Premiere, so I am still learning the basics. This is a bit different than Vegas, so stick with me. Create a new project and name it. Don't worry about the bottom here. In here, you've got so much things to look at, multiple tabs, buttons, folders, and whatnot. But first, let's import our raw footage. So drag it to your timeline, and there we go. This is not an Adobe Premiere tutorial, so I will not teach you how to edit. Let's say we're done, and you want to render. Adobe Premiere has it the easiest. Go to File, Export, and then Media. H.264 will give you a video format of MP4 which is beautiful because it is universal. Put it on a USB, put it through your phone, put it on a TV. The file size is reasonable while the quality is within YouTube standards. For preset, press Y. It should send you to YouTube and then resolution HD. Select the resolution of your raw video footage. Change the name of the video and find a good place to put it when it's done. Down on the video tab, everything has been laid out for you. I suggest you do not change anything, especially the bitrate setting. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I know you'll be tempted to want the best, highest quality video for your viewers. But the maximum, even the maximum Premiere can put out is 62.5 megabits per second. 
And if it's not 4K, it will be compressed to YouTube's suggested bit rates. So all you're doing is padding render time and consuming extra disk space. With 720p, YouTube recommends between 5 to 7.5 megabits per second. At 1080p, 8 megabits per second to 12 megabits per second. So the suggested 16 is already overkilling it. In the audio tab, notice how the sample rate defaults to 48 kilohertz as well as 320 kilobits per second bit rate. Leave the rest unchecked, especially frame blending as we had to do that manually in Sony Vegas. Click export and that's all. Adobe Premiere also has the ability to queue render sequence if you are going out for the whole day or something. So you have OBS set up but you have not decided what to get for post-processing and editing. Well, let me help you decide. Sony Vegas is very beginner friendly. It's easy to move things around and edit. However, I noticed that when editing huge files with multiple overlays like this, my computer is just freezing, the preview video function does not work, and editing becomes a nightmare. To get the final video, Render times with Vegas is unbelievably high and depending on what quality you are rendering at, it can take 2-4 to four hours. Premiere is definitely the best out of the two but it has a higher learning curve. Even to do the simplest things but once you get used to it, it's like riding a bike or putting on skates. Premiere renders very efficiently, always taking less than an hour for me and its video preview is one of the reasons why I love it. When I'm moving the seeker, there is little to no lag. The biggest drawback as I mentioned before with Premiere is that you might get audio desynchronization with MP4 containers but after moving to MOVs, I have no complaints except for the near illegal price tag. I hope this short and brief guide helped you and saved you some dear time. If you know a friend who wants to become a YouTuber, please lend this to them. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment, please. The only stupid questions are the ones not asked. My name is Pat, and thank you for watching.